Greetings, I'm Vlad Vasali, cardiologist and co-director of the Cardiovascular Lab Medicine at Mayo Clinic. I have no financial disclosures. Today, I'm going to approach a topic that is very dear to me, a biomarker that has recently stirred interest in the medical community, but at the same time brought some important controversies, which I'm gonna try to uh, address and elucidate. I'm talking about lipoprotein A or lipoprotein little a. I'm going to define lipoprotein A, talk about when and who should be tested for lipoprotein A, as well as some therapeutic options that we have for patients who have elevated lipoprotein A and we're trying to mitigate their cardiovascular atherosclerotic risk associated with this elevation. To start with, what is lipoprotein A? Simply put, lipoprotein A is a particle that associates with the cholesterol complex. As you can see here depicted in this uh, cartoon, it has two components, an LDL-like particle and an ApoA particle. The ApoA particle has the so-called cringles that are of various size uh, and are attached to the core of lipoprotein A. Now, these cringles or ApoA particle become important for two reasons. Number one, for the testing purposes, and number two, for the lipoprotein A particle size. The LDL particle contributes to plaque formation, and we know that LDL-like particle facilitates cholesterol deposition in the intima. At the same time, the ApoA particle has structural homology with plasminogen and inhibits fibrinolysis uh, therefore contributing to thrombosis in animal models. The ApoA particle has variable sizes, as I explained earlier, and this is important for immunoassay binding sites. Uh, it is, uh, the the uh, assays are better if they have epitopes located in the non-repeating subunits of the ApoA than if they have antibodies directed to the repeating subunits of ApoA. From a pathophysiology perspective, um, lipoprotein A elevation is independently associated with atherosclerotic cardiovascular events, and this happens in a dose-response manner. I'm talking about myocardial infarction, strokes, and even death. There is also an association between lipoprotein A elevation and aortic stenosis. We know that patients with elevated lipoprotein A have a strong genetic component, and if we were able to test five consecutive individuals representative of the population, we would find one of these individuals with elevated lipoprotein A. And we know that these elevations are usually missed. The cardiovascular risk conferred by lipoprotein A elevation is proportionally um, directly proportional to the lipoprotein A level. Some assay-related issues and cutoffs that we use clinically. First, the measurement is not standardized nor harmonized. We use either nanomole per liter or milligrams per deciliter. Uh, there is an isoform-dependent bias there is no need to do adjustments for age, sex, ethnicity, or comorbidities. We know that the risk starts to increase at 30 milligrams per deciliter. The current guidelines endorse an increased risk at 50 milligrams per deciliter. There is significantly increased risk when the value exceeds 125 nanomole per liter. How about guidelines? Who and when should we screen patients for lipoprotein A? Well, there are some controversies when you look at different societal guidelines and recommendations. The American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology, recommends screening for patients with familial hypercholesterolemia with a 2A level of confidence. If we look at other American uh, societal guidelines such as the National Lipid Association, their recommendations are much more extensive. In Europe, cardiologists test lipoprotein A um, one time in a lifetime for everyone. 
with all these recommendations and um, different guidelines, who should we screen for lipoprotein A? Well, for sure, patients with familial hypercholesterolemia. But we should also consider for patients with a personal or family history of premature coronary artery disease. Patients deem that intermediate risk by the ASCVD risk calculator or other calculators. Patients with established atherosclerotic uh, disease, be that vascular, cardiovascular, or cerebrovascular. Patients with aortic stenosis. Patients with less than expected response to statin therapy or patients with progressive atherosclerosis despite adequately controlled risk factors. One recommendation that is frequently missed is to screen all first-degree relatives of patients with elevated lipoprotein A. And I also wanted to bring my personal experience. In my practice, I tend to follow the European Society of Cardiology guidelines, which recommend a one testing in lifetime for everyone. Now that we define lipoprotein A, um, we know its structure, we know its association with atherosclerotic cardiovascular events, and we know who to test it when, in and when, the next step is to see what do we do with patients with elevated lipoprotein A. How do we approach treatment in these patients? Unfortunately, to date, there is no etiologic treatment. Niacin reduces lipoprotein A, but several studies have failed to show a survival benefit of patients with reduced lipoprotein A due to niacin. Taking that into consideration, along with significant side effects, um, associated with niacin therapy, we do not recommend this drug to reduce lipoprotein A. Estrogen reduces lipoprotein A as well um, by approximately 20%, but again, given the side effects associated with estrogen therapy, we do not recommend estrogen to reduce lipoprotein A. We do use apheresis. We have two positive trials but we should always keep in mind that there are complications related to LDLC lowering, and these complications are real. More recent trials, like the Fourier trial, which looks at PCSK9 inhibitors, and other studies looking at small interfering RNA inhibitors, such as Inclisiran, these drugs need more clinical validation before being implemented in clinical practice. So how do we treat these patients? Well, in my practice, we treat the patient by threefold. First of all, we address the risk factors aggressively. We target a very low LDL. We also aggressively address and recommend adoption of healthy lifestyle choices. Number two, we strongly consider initiation of a statin to reduce the overall cardiovascular risk, but also starting a low-dose uh, aspirin to reduce the thrombotic uh, properties of lipoprotein A. Number three, we recommend screening of all first-degree relatives for lipoprotein A. To summarize, lipoprotein A elevation uh, has important independent risk of cardiovascular atherosclerotic events in a dose-dependent manner. We should screen all patients with familial hypercholesterolemia. We should also consider screening patients at intermediate cardiovascular risk, patients with a personal or family history of premature coronary artery disease, and patients with established atherosclerotic disease. Or we should consider a universal screening one time lifetime as our colleagues in Europe do. Patients with elevated lipoprotein A, we should always aggressively treat risk factors and recommend healthy lifestyle choices. In these patients, we should always consider initiation of a statin and baby aspirin. We should not forget to recommend that all first-degree relatives of these patients be screened for lipoprotein A. Finally, we can also discuss with our patients that future pharmacologic interventions may be possible, but currently warrant more clinical validation before implementing in practice. With this, I thank you for your attention, and I'm looking forward for your comments and questions via email or Twitter. Thank you.